What we noted in diabetics who were on metformin compared to those who were using other drugs, they both had blood sugar lowering value, but the folks on metformin had benefit above and beyond that. A lower incidence of heart attacks, lower incidence of cancer, better metabolic markers, a decrease in body weight, reduction in percent body fat. What was going on? And might this be extrapolated toward others such that we could use it, even though we're not diabetics? Question, is metformin the first anti-aging drug? Well, some people think so. Metformin is a drug used for diabetics. It was FDA approved in 1995. Initially, there was a lot of concern about its potential to do harm, kidney damage because of other drugs that were similar to it. Turns out it's extraordinarily safe. So the drug's been around now for, what, over 30 years. I remember when it came out, I've been prescribing it that long. Wonderful drug for diabetics. But what about anti-aging and why do we think it might help people live longer and have anti-aging attributes? Because that's what's been seen in diabetics. What we noted in diabetics who were on metformin compared to those who were using other drugs, they both had blood sugar lowering value. But the folks on metformin had benefit above and beyond that. A lower incidence of heart attacks, lower incidence of cancer, better metabolic markers, a decrease in body weight, reduction in percent body fat. What was going on? And might this be extrapolated toward others such that we could use it, even though we're not diabetics. Now, some of you are jumping on that train. I get it. It kind of makes sense. We need to do anti-aging therapy before we have proof that it's going to work. Humans live a long time. That type of proof takes decades. We don't have that time. So we're st stuck between two spots, right? You don't want to jump in too soon, something that's unproven or harmful, and you don't want to wait. You know, recently, the black box warning on testosterone has been removed. And that took, oh, what, 20 years? We've known for that long that testosterone and hormone therapy does not increase cancer risk, does not increase heart disease risk. The point is that it takes conventional medicine 20 years to catch up to where we live in the here and now. Anti-aging. Why not? Why is aging not being attacked as a pathological process that can be altered? I get it. Chronologically, you can't change the number. We must die at some point. But all the things we associate with aging are modifiable. So let's go back to metformin. What's going on with metformin? Well, there are several things that recommend it. On a cellular level, it enhances the uh, AMPK pathway, adenosine monophosphate, activated protein kinase pathway, AMPK. What does that mean? It's the pathway that the cell utilizes when it needs energy. It flips the me mechanisms of the cellular activity into a catabolic process, not focusing on growth, focusing on energizing. The other side of that coin is the mTOR pathway, mechanistic target of rapamycin. mTOR is anabolic, pushes cell growth and division. AMPK energizes, but blunts the mTOR effect. That has a net positive effect on cellular health. Too much mTOR pushes cells into aggressive reproduction and senescence. This happens as we get older. mTOR becomes more dominant. So having an AMPK to kind of balance that, you need both, right? You got to have energy, but you also want to grow the cell, but you want to grow too much because then it becomes senescent, kind of grungy, grungy cells, not good. And it can increase the risk of cancer. So that may be the cellular mechanism. How cool is that? Now we're getting down to cellular anti-aging. That's where it's at. Maybe the metformin has something to offer us, but there's more to the story. The other thing metformin can do, it can lower blood sugar. Sugar is, after all, an essential element. It's what the cells live on. But too much sugar, pro-inflammatory, carcinogenic, atherosclerotic, how much is too much? It's hard to know, right? It's hard to know because blood sugar moves around so much. But the hemoglobin A1c, that's a number that you, you should know. A lot of people know their cholesterol. Maybe you know your weight. You should know your percent body fat. If you're a man, you want to be below 20, a woman below 30, ballpark numbers. How about your A1c, the sweet spot? So an A1c is a three-month average of what your blood sugar is. They measure it with a blood test. Now, 
after three months, it'll gradually shift, but three month intervals. Why? That's how long red blood cells live for. And hemoglobin, the heme, if you will, as that red blood cell attracts sugar to it. Think of it like a glazed donut. More sugar in the broth, more glazing on the donut. That's your hemoglobin A1C on the red blood cell. All right. So what does the number mean? The higher the number, the worse it is for you in general. But there are some thresholds worth worth noting. Between 5.0 and 5.4 is the sweet spot. That's where there's the greatest longevity and the least amount of chronic disease states. 5.0 to 5.4. How about if it's higher than that? It creeps up. A threshold of about 5.7 is worth being mindful about. If you go above 5.7, there's an increase across the board. Cancer, heart disease, dementia, shortening lifespan, all of it. So that's not good. You get all the way up to 6.4, 6.4, and now you're a diabetic. Getting that number down can be helpful. How about if it goes too low? It depends on who you are. If you're an otherwise healthy, strapping, robust human, and your hemoglobin A1C is 4.8, that's not a problem. If you're sickly, weak, if you eat poorly, if you have chronic illness, and it's below 5.0, that could be a red flag. So universally, 5.0 to 5.4. Whatever intervention you do, whether it's metformin, whether it's exercise, whether it's nutritional modification, check it at three-month intervals. Keep yourself in that sweet spot. So blood sugar correlates with some of the benefit. AMPK pathway may have something to do with it. We also know that metformin reduces inflammatory mediators. That's a good thing. What about aging? What about life extension? Well, there's a trial that's been designed and it's currently in its formative stage. It's called the TAME trial. The trial to um, uh, it's targeted targeting aging with metformin, TAME, T-A-M-E. I swear they come up with the acronym first, then the study. So the goal of the study is to determine, can metformin affect some of the biomarkers and some of the known consequences of aging? Can it actually extend life? Well, It's easier to judge its effect on chronic illnesses than on life extension. That's a tough one. I mean, if you're destined to live to be 60 and you do anti-aging and you live to be 65, you never knew that you were destined to die at 60 because you made it to 65, which you're still thinking, that's kind of short. And it is. My point is that we will never know exactly. Therefore, you have to make your decisions with the best information at hand. Metformin, nice drug. But there's some caveats. In 65-year-old men, metformin was shown to interfere with muscle growth when they did strength training. Well, that kind of makes sense when you think about how it works, right? Activates the blood sugar dynamic, the energy building dynamic, if you will, blunting the growth dynamic. So in a vacuum, older men weightlifting on metformin, a little bit less muscle development. Those men, however, were not on testosterone. In my world, Everybody's on it. If you're a man and you're past 60, absolutely. If you're a woman and you're past 50, yes. Let's set that aside, though. We know that metformin also improved biomarkers of aging. Well, that's kind of cool. However, because of its uncertain value regarding longevity and because of its research-based evidence primarily happening in people that have metabolic syndrome, I believe that metformin has value in people that are at risk, but not for people who are lean, fit, and athletic and healthy. If you are a little overweight, if your blood sugar is greater than the hemoglobin A1C is greater than 5.7, if you are, in fact, a diabetic, if you are elevated triglycerides and cholesterol, and if you're somebody that doesn't have a nutritional lifestyle that is optimized, metformin is for you. It helps reduce some of the consequences that your genetic endowment and your lifestyle have imposed on you. I mean, some people have high triglycerides, no fault of their own, have high sugar, no fault of their own, struggle with their weight, right? Metabolic, genetic, metformin, great drug, lowers percent body fat, lowers blood sugar, extraordinarily safe. Be cautious. There are some drug interactions. Do not do this on your own, people. I know you can get everything online now literally everything, but it would be a fool who tries to be his own doctor or nurse practitioner. Find somebody you can work with. This is generic cheap drug, but it's not benign. It can interact with other drugs. So I like it for certain people for anti-aging. I do not think it's a universal anti-aging 
benefit. If you have cancer, it's a different calculation because metformin has some unique anti-cancer attributes that may be worth applying, even if you're otherwise lean and fit. Now, side effects of metformin, sour stomach, diarrhea, those can be problematic. Some people just can't take it. If you take a drug that's supposed to be preventative, life-extending, or enhancing your health, and it makes you unwell, just stop. And that goes for supplements as well. Your body's telling you something. If you can't tolerate metformin, what about berberine? Berberine is a natural herbal supplement. It's been used for thousands of years to help control blood sugar and for other purposes. Yes, it does lower blood sugar. Almost as good as metformin, but they work through different mechanisms. Metformin is more effective in the liver, in the muscle, a little more potent, lowering blood sugar. Berberine works more in the gastrointestinal tract, enhancing the microbiota. Nice agent if you're struggling with your sugar, correlates with some weight loss, that's a good thing. So if you're the metabolic profile person and you can't take metformin, berberine is next up. How about combining them? Yeah, you could do that. You'll get even better blood sugar lowering effect if that's a concern. Remember, there's such a thing as too low. Although these drugs can't push you into a danger zone. Maybe make you feel a little bit weak, but they're not going to make you pass out. So metformin for anti-aging, patient dependent. If you're a metabolic syndrome, high triglyceride, overweight, family history, you've got elevated blood pressure, elevated blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C greater than 5.7. It's a great play. For the rest of you, Otherwise, fit, healthy, eating well, there are better things you can do. We'll be talking about those down the road. Anti-aging, why not? Neutralizing the adverse effect of the aging process, yeah, we can do that. All right, gang, thanks for your attention, your time. Be talking to you soon. Bye now.